We're a group from the Kunming Institute of Botany, a group of very passionate mycologists, and we're here in Honghe, in the Amoshan Nature Reserve. So we're sitting around 2,000 meters above sea level. One of the reasons you'll see a lot of lichen, a lot of sort of epiphytes, ferns in the trees, orchids, is most of the year round we're sitting in a cloud up in these forests. This mushroom, just the ranger found, they say it's the, um, the edible mushroom for them and also a very common one. The economic potential, the economic value of mushrooms in this region, it's, it's enormous. It's a billion dollars a year. It's mostly wild harvested and traded. They export it all around the world. It sustains numerous rural communities across the region. Uh, this is the mastaki. It's a very prized mushroom here. The price is one kilo, uh, 500 yuan. That's about $80 US per kilogram. But mushrooms, it's, it's so beyond just big business because it's so deeply ingrained in the local people and the local culture. Why are they so expensive, these mushrooms? The taste is very special. Everyone knows mushrooms. You can go to the forest, everyone's collecting, everyone understands like what is good, what is bad. And also, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, that's only one sort of aspect. Ecologically, it's incredible, the diversity that we get here, where you have literally thousands of mushroom species in one small geographic area. It's, it's an amazing place to be studying this. I think the, the interesting stat is over the last six years, one in, every one in five species we collect is actually a new species to science. It's not even known yet. So it's, we, we're collecting more new species than we can actually name at the moment. There's fungi everywhere around here. In this one small area, there's three different types of fungus. And an ocibi. There's a cup fungus, and there's puffballs over there. And Sam, have you seen this one before? I have seen this before. And these puffballs? No. And the cup fungus? No. So two of these are species that Sam hasn't seen before. It doesn't mean they're new to science, but they're unusual, and he's seen thousands of different sorts of mushrooms. Sam, what are these? Amanita species. Is this species edible? No, this is not edible. And we have to be very careful about Amanitas. It's a dangerous genus. Yeah, the, the death cap is an Amanita, destroying angel is yeah. an Amanita. All of the most poisonous mushrooms in the world seem yeah. to be Amanita. Amanitas. My role here is to document all the mushrooms we find in this forest and ultimately we uh, taxonomically identify them and then uh, we will know which mushrooms are edible and which mushrooms are poisonous. In this way we can let the locals know about the mushrooms in this region. Oh, what have you got here? Another yes. stinkhorn. Yeah, stinkhorn. The first thing in documentation is taking good photographs in the forest. So we have the best fungi photographer in the world here, Steve Axford. So he takes very nice photographs of these mushrooms we find here. And then we do all the taxonomic documentation. And uh, later on, we uh, do the microscopic uh, studies. We do DNA. So all together, we can come up with a nice identification of these mushrooms. So what sort of fungus is this, Sam? This is the first time we've seen this one. So yeah. you'll do a DNA on this we'll and we'll find out what it is. Mm -hmm. When I started photographing fungi, I just photographed them because they were pretty. And I found that there was a never-ending array of different types and sizes. And it gradually dawned on me that this was a, a really major component of life. Every time I come out into the forest, I learn something new. And I, I start to understand how the whole thing connects together. I'll try and put this fungus down here. We find the three major types of fungi here. 
There's firstly the sap probes, which are the recyclers. So they recycle all the fallen leaves and wood back into the soil so the nutrient is recycled. Then there's the ectomycorrhizal fungi, which work in a mutualistic relationship with the tree roots. So would these be ectomycorrhizal? This uh, mushroom always grow in the pine tree forest. So Maybe this tree. They enable the tree to access more of the nutrients and water in the soil than it would be able to do otherwise. And in return, the tree provides sugars and carbohydrates to the fungi. This one's a parasitic fungi. This is a corticeps. And then there's the parasitic fungi, and we're finding a huge variety of parasitic fungi here. This is a cordyceps fungi. This is the fruiting body of it here, so the equivalent of the mushroom, and attached by a long stem going underground where there'll be an insect of some sort. Yellow, what do you call this in Chinese? Uh, this Chinese name is chong cao. Chong cao. Chong, uh, chong is uh, insects and the bugs, and uh, the cao is the grass. So it's called insect grass, literally. Yes, insect grass, and uh, that's the uh, fungi grow on the insects. And do you know what sort of insect this mm -hmm. one is growing on? Uh, no, we must dig that host from the soil, and uh, then we know what's the... With us at the moment, we have Yele. He is absolutely passionate about insects. And he's selected to study groups of, of fungi and mushrooms that have some form of relationship with insects. For instance, the cordyceps group, which is just absolutely amazing. We found so many species of cordyceps out here, it's mind-blowing. And they're just the craziest, weirdest of the mushrooms. <laughs> this host is one moss or butterfly slurry. Mm -hmm. So this is a caterpillar cordyceps. You can see the stem going down here and attaching to what was a caterpillar. The cordyceps fungus has killed it and now the fruiting bodies have come up. Check out these cool guys. Oh. Look what happens to a cicada. How cool is that? Wow. Now this is cordyceps fungi on a cicada. These orange things are the fruiting bodies of the cordyceps. You can see this is the body of this cicada the head is here, and the whole thing is perfect. I've just got to find the best angle to photograph it, which maybe is this side, actually. Well, what makes puffballs different from other fungi? This part is just like a, a ball, and when it is young, very, very tough, and when it is old, it will have a hole, and the, the powder will release. Like this, yes. I like doing this. And then we have Li Hui Li. She's a PhD student. She's working on a group of fungi which include the puffballs and the uh, stink horns. It's quite funny to see her proudly marching around with the most disgusting of mushrooms you can imagine. <laughs> they really do stink. But she's really good and she's named and described a number of new species and uh, she's definitely contributing to a knowledge gap within that group where other people just haven't studied this yet. It's, it's very important in terms of taxonomy and fundamental research. Yeah, this is a, a Rashula species, but uh, this particular one I haven't seen before. Let's hope this is a new species. Yeah, so you're going to try to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a saying, uh, every mushroom is edible at least once. <laughs> Yerle thinks this is a cordyceps that actually lives off other fungi and in this case most likely a truffle. The mushrooms are they're just so interesting and so diverse and the role that each different group plays with an ecosystem it's just incredible like I don't know as a scientist it's a constant process of discovery for me and it's just really started to dominate the type of research that I want to do. Here we have a beefsteak fungus. That's nice, it's the first time I've actually collected one of these. What's the Latin name? Fistulina. Fistulina. It kind of sucked me in, like, I don't know, I mean I might be biased, but it's probably one of the most important parts of any ecosystem. Yet we're only realizing now that we don't know enough and it's kind of 
late in the game to be realizing there's a huge component of the ecosystem that's still a black box to us.